Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas Live, the video version of the magazine about doing business in Moscow. I'm John Harris. From a normal school to the finest universities, how does free education work in Moscow? Every child should have a little Britain in the Russian capital. What are English schools here like? The fault of some Western countries is that they're too focused on welfare of the students and not enough on building up a useful body of knowledge. Watch it now. Capital Ideas Live. Of course in Moscow there are a small number of private, so-called independent or international schools operating. And they provide an education which is almost identical to that that you can find anywhere else in the world. Our next report is about those schools which are now operating in competition with each other, which is actually not a bad thing, as it ensures that they provide a full range of educational facilities. Private schools are chosen by the most prosperous and most responsible of Moscow parents. Every month, families spend as much on a single child as normal Muscovites earn in total. But for that money, they get an education that, in days gone by, they would have had to travel far from home to get. All our students are um, bilingual, like their working language at school is English, and uh, we encourage our students to speak only English, even outside the school. I control it, but sometimes, to me, I, I, I don't want to speak English, I just speak in on Russian. <laughs> British children are here to study like they do at home, while Russians are here for the British system, where the child creates rather than just copying stuff down. For example, in David Nicholas's class, Moscow children reconstruct the Great Fire of London of 1666. David has worked in Spain and Turkey, but he eventually opted for Russia. He likes the thirst for knowledge that Russian children demonstrate. And he likes the packed life to be led in the Russian capital just as much. There is quite a big international expat scene, so you can meet people and you can socialise and there's lots of things to do. So it is, and obviously being a capital, there is like lots of things like go for walks, go to cinema, English speaking cinemas, which for me as my Russian is very poor, is very important. So there are lots of... Um, amenities around. Don't forget, you can use the table. Ross Hunter is the director of this school. He has served the English education system for 40 years, 20 of them in Russia. Here, Ross has managed to progress from being a teacher to being a director. He believes that international schools in Moscow have a great future. Now, education has changed in Russia significantly since the fall of the Soviet Union. And one of the biggest changes, of course, is the appearance of international schools. Now, what are international schools? How do they operate? What are they for? Now, this is what I'm going to be talking about with Ross Hunter, who's the headmaster of ESS, Le Fortiva, one of the international schools I'm talking about, and also the founder of a series of schools around Moscow. In Russia, uh, what is the best syllable for an international school to adopt to be able to allow it to educate Russian children? I think, to an extent, that's a false god. The international curriculum, whether it leads to A-levels or IB, yeah. off has quite a lot of common factors, including multilingualism, including objective exams set and marked externally, but most of all, it's the style of teaching which is promoting independent learning. It's not good enough just to get the grades in school. Students have got to be ready for the much tougher, unsupported life at a university. Mm -hmm. So we are not just drilling knowledge in, we are looking to inculcate a mindset which is questioning, problem solving, and independently driven. Okay, well that's actually very good that you talked about that because there is um, 
some criticism, a lot of criticism being leveled at secondary schools in Russia, in general, state schools as well as international schools, that they're exam factories, that they're, all they really want to do is to produce people who can get into university with certain grades. Let's be clear, everybody has a right to expect the highest academic standards and good exam grades. Yeah. If you can match the Russian system of enormous quantities of knowledge, balance that with an inquiring mind and a problem-solving yeah. approach, you've got a really strong combination. Yeah. The fault of some Western countries is that they're too focused on welfare of the students and not enough on building up a useful body of knowledge. Um, but it's considered that um, you know uh, a lot of new independent schools um, have already opened and a lot more are going to open. How many of these schools can the Russian market take? Moscow is continuing to grow. Uh, Moscow is enjoying a period of rising prosperity. There seems to be no limit to the number of families, local and expat, who want the best for their children and are prepared to put their hands in their pockets and offer something a little bit special and a little bit more useful in the later stages.